The CW Chronicles Sinners Written by Silvano Williams All content copyright 2013-2023 All rights reserved Chapter 6 Vindication CW fell away from the space armada and through the planet's atmosphere. He limply plummeted down the skies as if unconscious, dumbfounded over Major Skitty's decision to destroy himself. C.W. was generally contemplative of his surroundings, but he remained indifferent to the show of lights and ionic reactions from the reverse magnetic pulse even as he fell through them. Pink and blue luminescent rings rippled within the RMP bubble as it slowly wormed its way down the planet's atmosphere toward the surface. It created auroras of all colors that illuminated the planet's darkened skies. The first reversed magnetic pulse bubble was much further below and had just passed through the planet's stratosphere. As it pushed itself closer to the surface, it forced weather patterns out of its way to form a ring of thick clouds around it. Crackling lightning illuminated the darkest parts of the planet, and thunder rumbled constantly. The moisture-rich clouds around the bubbles rapidly concentrated into dense and severe storms. To my relief, CW regained his composure, just in time to dive headfirst into the second RMP bubble. What happened in there, C? I asked softly. Loud static scratches answered me before I heard his voice. He destroyed himself. CW finally said amid the noise. His voice was faint and soft, almost inaudible due to the static. Strangely, despite the rushing air from his fall and the muffled thunder outside, there was very little noise inside the RMP bubble. Major Skitties destroyed the ship? I was perturbed over the incident but not surprised. I told you see, something weird is going on. My monitors flashed to signal that our backup was about to arrive out of quantum space. See, that RMP bubble is causing a hell of a lot of static on your communicator. CW did not reply to me. I reset one of the monitors to track his descent and ran a status check on his equipment. I figured the best thing to do was to continue talking to him to redirect his attention to the mission. Get to the surface as fast as you can, I said, and get as many of the inhabitants out of the impact zone of those RMPs. The bubbles themselves won't hurt the lifeforms, but the reaction with the planet's core will be catastrophic. Hundreds of Dimension Police spacecraft materialized directly behind me. About time, Commander, I hailed jokingly, still fidgeting with the several monitor screens displaying images of the armada above the planet. I don't know how many of our assets I've disabled so far, but it doesn't look like I've even made a dent. I then scanned the general area on the burning moon where the blast that hit CW came from, and found Villain's ship. It didn't seem like he was making much of an effort to remain hidden, and was easily visible on the screen. I brought the monitor, displaying the commander to the front. If you notice here, I said to him, clicking on the monitor showing Villain's ship to share the image. I think Villain is managing his troops from this vantage point. That. The commander said with an uncommonly worried tone in his voice. We cannot see the space armada on our radars. What? I realized I hadn't looked at my radars after we arrived. No need to when I had the entire damn space armada right in front of me the whole time. I was about to kick myself for the omission when the sight of the impending attack made me choke down my words. Most of the space armada had left their guarding positions over the planet and were speeding at full throttle toward us, shooting every plasma and projectile weapon in their arsenal. Oh shit, I repeatedly shouted, getting on my flight controls like a cowboy on a rampaging bull. Luckily, I evaded the attack by unintentionally maneuvering into a sharp and uncontrolled spiraling nosedive. To my dismay, many of the Dimension Police pilots were not as quick or lucky to react. As soon as they came out of quantum space, many fell victim to the surprise attack. Damn it. This isn't good. I lamented when I realized the vulnerable position the Dimension Police had arrived into. I had failed to see the perfect scenario Villain had created for his ambush. I suspected a trap but not at this scale. I pulled my ship back into control to engage the space armada with my ion cannons. 
Commander Sandworm stumbled on the screen as the command center maneuvered away from the attack. Several officers ran around in the background to put out fires and recover from the damage. I then heard a familiar voice in the background yelling through the noise at the commander. It was Ilona. We identified the Armada. Even in the middle of this mess, hearing her made a broad smile creep on my face. I had not listened to her voice in a long time. Really? Well that was fast. Great. I enthusiastically and exaggeratedly called for her attention, unsuccessfully. That. The commander said while reading the document Ilona had handed him. He seemed to disapprove of its content. I need you to scan the space armada for life forms, he said, tossing the document aside. I stretched the commander's screen horizontally, which brought Ilona into the picture. Ilona, I greeted her in unashamed excitement as I ionized another armada ship. Hello, Vlad, she replied, her tone markedly subdued. She always kept a professional attitude toward me in public, after our induction into the Dimension Police. I stared at her for a few seconds before she broke the moment and repeated the commander's orders. We need you to scan the space armada, Vlad. My mood changed from dopey to belligerent. Regardless, I did as told and fought the urge to quip a smartass remark. While maneuvering between the space armada and their attacks, I set up the scanner we used on the planets destroyed by villain. I zoomed the scanner in to target a cluster of vessels as I did a barrel roll around their rush. No life found, the monitor flashed. Impossible. I punched the cockpit controls. Commander, the stupid scanner is broken. No, Vlad. The commander said with a low hoarse voice. He paused and looked over the scan results. I fear it is not. He then turned to Ilona. Medical officer Ilona, please confirm these results. The scan. She started reluctantly. The scan is accurate, sir. She finished with a shocked look of pity on her face. What in the hell does that mean? I unconsciously took out my frustration on my flight controls by carelessly flipping switches and using too much force to push buttons. Contrary to my manic reactions, the commander calmly clicked on his console controls and faced his camera in a collected manner. Attention all officers, he said pausing between the words. You have authorization to destroy the space armada. Does that mean deadly force? I questioned the commander, noticing he had excluded CW from our communication channel. I jumped out of my seat, leaning menacingly over the monitor, doing an abysmal job of keeping my composure. I muttered my words at the commander slowly, as if he were having a hard time understanding a kindergarten concept. We never use deadly force. What are you thinking? CW would never agree to. I recant what I previously said. The commander suddenly said to interrupt me. Thank you. I yelled out at him, slumping back on my chair in relief, barely avoiding an attack from a group of Space Armada ships. I command every Dimension police officer to use everything in your arsenal against the Space Armada. I fell out of my chair. Those beings piloting the ships need to be destroyed. This is an order. He finished. No, I shouted, once again managing to avoid certain destruction from the surrounding armada. Surprisingly, the commander with his dry scratchy voice replied to me, not with a command but with what I briefly felt was a necessary appeal to my emotions. There is no time to explain the specifics right now, Lieutenant Vladimir, but you must trust us. The space armada pilots are not living organisms. Ilona stood directly next to him, her posture reaffirming what he had just said, and for a split second, even in the middle of my righteous wrath, I turned off my feelings and saw the reality of the panorama around us. I looked down at my twitching fingers on the triggers, and rationalized how easy it was to switch to plasma bolts, and how much simpler and judicially correct it would be to blow the entire space armada out of existence. Outside, I could see that the armada was slowly overrunning the Dimension Police. Not with skill but with sheer numbers. We were losing this fight. Then I had a sudden realization. 
My survival up to this point in my life was a miracle at best. And yes, there was more I could do for the Dimension Police, and to save the cosmos given the proper tools. This wouldn't have been the first time I disposed of an enemy. You have to trust us, the commander repeated, and looked down at the papers spread over his consoles. We had scanned the Armada already, and came to the same conclusion. We just needed you to see for yourself. Those bodies are causing great harm to the life force energy in the cosmos. This time with his usual stringent tone, he added, They are already dead. Destroy those ships. I clenched my teeth and finally looked up at the screen in quiet agreement. Ilona nodded at me as we made eye contact as a final sign of encouragement. There were only two people I trusted with my life, Ilona and C.W. If she agreed this was the only way to proceed, then I was satisfied she had exhausted all other possible options. Gladly, I gave in to her better judgment. I picked myself up and took back control of my ship, just in time to evade the incoming fire from a small group of Space Armada ships that had targeted me. I switched from the ion guns to the plasma bolts and effortlessly destroyed them. I should have felt terrible, but I did not. I felt justified. These assholes had just killed a bunch of the DP, and it had been my fault. It was time for me to earn my vindication.